In this video, we'll take a look at something called the multiplicative counting principle. And it's really an organized way to count things that are made up of two or more parts. So we'll start with an example. The school cafeteria offers the choice of two main courses. You can either have grilled cheese sandwiches or soup of the day. And there's five different desserts that you can choose from. Uh, Jello, pudding, fruit cups, sundaes, or granola bars. So the question is, how many different lunches could you have? And we're going to solve this in a couple of ways. First of all, we're going to solve it in a like a listing way, an organized way to list things to make sure you have a count for everything. And then we'll I'll show you how to use the multiplicative counting principle to solve it as well. And then we'll get into something called a tree diagram also. So first of all, you could list, and this is the organized counting way to do it, uh, there's main courses and there's desserts. So the main courses you can have, and we'll use a capital G to represent the grilled cheese sandwiches, and the capital S represents the soup of the day. And the desserts, I'll use lowercase letters for all those. There's the J for Jello, P for pudding, F for fruit cup, little s for sundae, and uh, little g for granola, or sorry, I used B for granola bar. Uh, just to, I've already used the capital G here, so I'll use B for bar, granola bar. So you could list all possibilities. That's one thing you could do. And so you could go, I could have a grilled cheese sandwich and a jello. I could have a grilled cheese sandwich and a pudding. I could have a grilled cheese sandwich and a fruit cup, grilled cheese sandwich and a sundae, grilled cheese sandwich and a granola bar. So those are all the possible lunches that you could have that start with having a grilled cheese as the main course. And then we would do the soup of the day. So the soup of the day and the jello pudding, so the, the jello, jello and pudding are two different things here. The soup of the day and the pudding, the soup of the day and the fruit cup, soup of the day and a sundae, that's the SS one, and soup of the day and the granola bar. So if you count these, you'll notice that there are 10 possible lunches that you could have. Now. The multiplicative counting principle says, since we can um, select this in two different ways and this in five different ways, we could get that 10 by just multiplying 2 by 5. See, the 2 is the number of ways the first thing could be selected, and you would normally select the main course first, although you don't have to. And the 5 is the number of ways you can select the second part of the desserts. And it really doesn't matter whether you do 2 times 5 or 5 times 2. It still works out to 10. So that's the multiplicative counting principle way to do it right here, not the, all the listing. This is just to show you that the multiplicative counting principle gave you the same answer. Now, this is called a tree diagram over here. And tree diagrams can actually go left to right or horizontally across the page or go vertically. There's two different ways to draw the same thing. And so this first line here and line here represents the selection of the uh, main courses. So you could select, so kind of this is your starting point. You could go along here and have a grilled cheese sandwich, or instead you could go along here and, and have instead the soup of the day. And then, so let's say you selected the uh, grilled cheese. So there you could select the jello, you could select the pudding, you could instead select the fruit cup, you could instead select to have a sundae, or you could instead select to have a granola bar. Even if you had instead selected, instead of selecting the grilled cheese, selected the soup of the day, you still have five different possibilities. Now, these are all what are called the outcomes. So, you see, if I go along here, GJ is grilled cheese sandwich and the jello. And to get to this point, I go grilled cheese sandwich and the pudding grilled cheese sandwich and the fruit cup. So notice that this is actually just listing exactly the same thing we listed over here. So for example, this last one down here is the event that uh, we selected to have soup of the day and a granola bar. So that's the SB. Uh, this one right here, soup of the day and the pudding. So again, there's the 10 possible outcomes solved by using a tree diagram. So the multiple multiplicative counting principle says that if an action can be done in m number of ways and for each of those way a second action can be done in n number of ways then the two actions can be done in m n ways you're multiplying the m by the n the multiplicative counting principle can be extended to cover actions performed in more than two ways in fact any number of ways it doesn't matter how big it could be example number two john's colorblind 
He has five different pairs of pants, eight different shirts, nine pairs of socks varying in color, and three pairs of shoes. How many different outfits, and we'll use that word kind of with a, a fair bit of liberality, uh, can John show up to school in if he must wear a pair of pants, a pair of socks, a shirt, and shoes? So, since he can select the number, his has five different pairs of pants. So, this is all one outfit. There are five ways to select the first thing, which we'll call the pants. There are eight ways to select the shirt, nine ways to select a pair of socks, and three ways to select the pairs of shoes. And so we would multiply that all together, and so he actually has over a thousand, a uh, thousand eighty to be exact, outfits that he could possibly wear. So that's how you use the multiplicative counting principle. Now, remember, this is all one thing. There are four different parts or stages, so that's why we multiply them. It's not like they're, there's two different things that there's actually an adding principle as well, but it's have you have two different possible ways to do something. Okay, so, um, but in this case, the multiplicative counting principle is used when something has several ways or stages or parts to it, like different um, outfits here, or let's say it's an automobile and you're selecting, you know, there's 10 different in exterior colors and five different interior colors, and it could be four wheel drive or two wheel drive. So you would multiply all those different options together to get the number of ways you could possibly select a particular vehicle. Example number three. A license plate is to have three letters followed by three numbers. How many different license plates are possible? So, this would represent the six different letters or digits. So letter L stands for letter, N stands for number. And so if there's no restriction whatsoever, then each of these can be selected in 26 different ways. And each of the numbers, there's 10 different numbers in our number system, 0 to 9. So there's 10 ways to select each of these. And so since this whole license plate has these six different parts, we would multiply those together. So it's 26 times 26 times 26 times 10 times 10 times 10. So there are 17,576,000 possible license plates. Now, uh, the back to the adding thing. If you also said, well, let's say the province or state has run out of license plates. Okay, so they said, well, maybe we'll add another number. We'll make it three letters followed by up to four, uh, by four numbers. So what we would do then is we would go 26 times 26 times 26 times 10 times 10 times 10 times another 10. So this would be to the power of four. And we would get a number even larger than this. So if the state or province said uh, you can have either three letters and three numbers or three letters and four numbers, then we would add that second number to the 17,576,000 to get the total number of, of possible license plates. So in that case, that's what you would add the two, because there's two different ways to do that license plate, you would add those two things together. So that's the adding principle, not really the main focus of this particular video, but that's how you, when you would add, an example of when you would add. Uh, example four, uh, we have a president, treasurer, and secretary uh, to be drawn from the people Amelia, Bruce, Carmen, and Dolores. And just to make it clear, Bruce is the only male here. Okay, Amelia is a female, Carmen's a female, and Dolores is a female. This is the year that the president must be a female. Maybe they alternate, uh, has to be female one year, has to be male the next year, etc., just to get some gender balance. Uh, how many executives can be chosen? So we're choosing a president, treasurer, and secretary. So notice that uh, order is important here. If we make Amelia the president, Carmen the treasurer, and Dolores the secretary, that is completely different than if we made Carmen the president, Amelia the treasurer, and Dolores still the secretary. Okay, so uh, certainly order is important here. Um, I haven't really mentioned the word permutation, but these are all permutations because changing the order uh, makes it would make it different in this case. Not so much, not with the food example at the beginning, um, but it, it would here because order matters here. So 
this first set of branches is president and this next one is the treasurer and this next one is the secretary and so there's four people but if we say that this is the year the president must be a female then bruce cannot be president so he's kind of restricted poor bruce so we could choose to have amelia carmen or dolores so there's three different ways to select the president now after you've selected the president there's four people all together so any of the three people could be the treasurer so for example if amelia is the president then we could have bruce carmen or dolores for the treasurer if we instead select carmen for the president then you could have any three of the other people amelia bruce or dolores for the treasurer and if instead you selected dolores for the president then you could have amelia bruce or carmen as the treasurers last uh, column here uh, is the secretary so you see if I've gone a here and B here now of course one person can't have two different roles okay so that's that's an assumption here so if Amelia has been used already for the president and Bruce for the treasurer then the only possibilities here and here are Carmen and Dolores if we used Amelia and Carmen here then it has to be either Bruce or Dolores here Amelia and Carmen here, uh, sorry, Dolores here. So the only possibilities out here for secretary are Bruce or Carmen. So that's how you fill this all the way down. So for example, uh, this top outcome or possibility here goes is ABC. So we go ABC here and then A, B, D for the next one, A, C, B for the next one, A, C, D for the next one, etc. And we can list them all. I kind of stagger them because there's so many. These tree diagrams can get very large very quickly. So if you count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, there are 18 possible executives that can be chosen. Now, from the tree diagram, it's easy to see how many uh, different ways for each stage there are. There are three ways to select the president, so to the fundamental accounting principle or multiplicative counting principle. There's actually two different ways to say that. There's three ways to select the president. And then for each of these, there's three, three ways to select the treasurer times, and then after you use two people of the four, there's only two ways for each of these on the end. So times two gives you the 18. So that is how you use the uh, multiplicative counting principle to do this without the tree diagram. Uh, last example, number five here, and there's two parts of this. How many three-digit even numbers can be created if repetition of digits is allowed, first of all, and then if it's not allowed? So I'm going to show you both different possibilities here. Now, there's 10 different digits in our number system, but you can't start a three-digit number with zero. Okay, like 0, 5, 3 is only a two-digit two digit number. So there's only actually nine different digits, digits we can use for the hundreds place. Now, you could have anything from 0 to 9 in the tens place and the same in the end. Oh, sorry, uh, it has to be even, I forgot. Uh, so if it's even, you can only have 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Uh, an even number has to end in an even number. So... There's nine ways to select the hundreds digit, there's 10 ways to select the tens digit, and there's five ways to select the even number in the end to make it even. And so this is all one thing. There's nine, there's nine ways to do this times, there's 10 ways to select the tens digit times, and for each of those 10 ways, there's five ways to select the ones digit in the end to make it even. And so we would multiply nine by 10 by five to give us 450, and so there are 450 possible three-digit even numbers with repetition of digits allowed. Now, just to make sure you understand what I mean by that, repetition of digits allowed means you could have, for example, what, let's say this number was 388. So I've repeated the 8 here. Okay, I mean even uh, 222 is the three-digit number that uses the two every single time. So in the uh, first part here, repetition of digits is allowed. Over here, not allowed means all the digits have to be different. So these are okay for A here, but not for B. 
we can't repeat digits in B. Now, it does complicate things just a little bit uh, when repetition of digits is not allowed. So first of all, I'm going to say the hundreds digit has to be an even. There's two different cases here, and then down here will be if it's an odd, it starts as an odd number. Now, this is still 0 to 9, but different than these two numbers. And this would have to be still 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So there's five ways to do that. So there's four ways to select the first number to be even. It can either be 2, 4, 6, or 8. Now, if I've used an even number here, then I don't have five different choices for the uh, digit in the end. I only have four because I've already taken one even number here. And so there's only four possibilities here. Now I've used a digit here and a digit here, so two of the 10. So that's why there's eight different possible ways I can select the tens digit. And so we multiply those. So four times eight times four is 128. So there's 128 of them that start with an even number. And of course, end with an even number. Now, if instead the hundreds digit is odd, and this is zero, zero to nine indifferent, and zero, two, four, six, or eight. Now, if this is an odd number, it could be 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. So there are five different ways to do that. And then this is still five ways here because if this is odd, I haven't already, I haven't already used an even number. So there's five ways to select the last one. But I've used a digit here and a digit here. So there's eight ways to select that digit because I've used two of the 10 between the first and the last one, the hundreds and the ones. So five times eight times five is 200. So we would add these kind of like that license plate example because uh, there's 128 ways. If it starts with an even number, there's 200 ways if it starts as an odd number. So that adds to 328. So there's 328 three digit even numbers with repetition of digits not allowed. And that's the end of the video.